Look at the facts. In just five years, there have been 24 fatalities. In this film, we reconstruct two actual fatal accidents, two case histories, both caused by insufficient loco clearances. John is 22 years old, a trainee locomotive driver. Hold it, John! He's completed the surface loco driving course, and this is his eighth day of underground training. Come on out, John, on to work with you. Make sure you've got the handbrake on. Yeah, handbrake's on. Ted, an authorised driver, is supervising him. Right, John. As you know, we're using this Loki for shunting purposes only. Now, if you had a complete man-riding set, you'd couple these air brakes to corresponding couplings on the Loki itself. In addition, each car has its own uh, handbrake for parking purposes only. As a matter of fact, this one isn't working. Yeah. I know all about the brakes. We learned that at training centre. Right. Uh, that uh, June, how did you get on with her last night? Oh, not bad. All right. <laughs> Tickle a fancy with your whiskers, did you? <laughs> I'll give us a couple of days and we're away. A couple of days at your age. Right, climb to the back and I'll drive it off to number three. They have just started work. It's the night shift. Their first job is to bring a set out by and park them out of the way in a siding. the shunt, a well-lit area in constant use during days. The time is 11 at night. John, yeah. change the points because I want to take her into number three siding. When I've gone through, change them back again because this is the main road. I was hoping you'd say that.
Anything wrong? No, I don't think so. Right. Get into the cab. Take her out of the siding, and when you're through, I'll change the points. Yeah, right. Okay. Might need that. You don't say. John died before Ted returned. This accident was caused by the position of a water pipe beside the track, a clear breach of the regulations. It was installed temporarily that morning. It could as easily have been set against the side of the roadway, well clear and giving more than adequate clearance. This has now been done, but too late for John. Apart from this one pipe, the area has very generous clearances throughout. Could this have created a sense of false security? This is George, 56 years old, an experienced underground diesel locomotive driver. He's worked at this colliery for many years. His daily job is to supply materials to this heading. He must pick up a loaded train of mine cars from the main loco road and bring them in by through a set of ventilation doors to this spot. He then returns the empties along the same route. We'll get these empties back to 824. I'll see you in about half hour. Where's Bill? Huh? You've been got. Bloody sick as usual. There's no bugger spare. I have to do everything with bloody self. is the last person to see George alive. He approaches the first ventilation doors. The track at this point is not centrally disposed to the door opening. And because of ground movement, there's a slight transverse tilt on the rails, considerably reducing the clearances on one side. This is what happened.
bloody hell's wrong now? Buggery doors. There he remained. It is forty minutes later. She's all right the first half. Hey. What's he parked in the doors for? Well, it was where he's gone, isn't it? <laughs> Don't! They didn't bother to investigate, but sat down, overlooking the scene, and started to eat their snap. It is now 70 minutes after the accident. A couple of minutes, lad. Ah, the stink off that loco. What's the matter down there? Oh. Hey, George, you there? Something's wrong, Red. Come on. George. George? Billy, get the pity. I'll get him off the face. Who can drive a loco? Yes, Come on, in you go, lad. We'll ease it back a bit and, and 
get him out. Eric, go around the other side. Fred, look at this. Dead man. Well, kick it out. George was killed because there was not sufficient clearance between the loco and the ventilation door. The track should have been positioned centrally and kept level. Also, he should not have been driving without a guard. If a guard had been with him to open the doors, this accident might not have happened. See in about a half hour. Here was Bill. Huh? Chain guard. Ah, oh, he's bloody sick as usual and there's no bugger spare. I have to do everything with bloody self. Both factors are clearly in breach of the transport rules. But what other factors contributed to this accident? Having tried unsuccessfully to nudge the doors open with the loco, he stops. Well, that bloody hell's wrong now. Dismounts, leaving the loco tight against the door. With the engine running, in gear, without applying the brakes with the dead man's pedal wedged and on a slight gradient. He then takes the short cut. And having succeeded once, he returns the same way. Did all this start the loco moving? The inquiry recommended that proper clearances must exist here. They now do, and elsewhere in the colliery. They also recommended that loco drivers should be made doubly aware of the transport rules concerning driving with a guard at all times. Let's look once again. Why was John leaning out? What was he looking at? Was he checking to see if these vehicles were remaining stationary against those pieces of wood? Not very practical or sensible. Why didn't he use a proper scotch, like a rail stop block? Were there any available? It was recommended at the accident inquiry that these be used in the future. Also, immediate instructions were given to warn drivers of the need for operating only within the loco cab. And a check be made on clearances throughout the colliery and all other collieries in the area. Would running a profile plate through the entire locomotive system from time to time have been the answer? Then would George and John still have been alive today?